Hello and welcome back to the Local Government People's Program. My name, Adam Spagnolo, and it's my pleasure to welcome you back in the studio. At the moment, I have Jack Garber. Welcome back, Jack. Thank you, Adam. Thank you. Pleasure Jack is uh, a candidate, of course, in the Hammersley Ward of the City of Stirling. Uh, the City of Stirling elections, as we all know, are here, Jack. After all this time, gosh, it just seems to have... It seemed to be a long way away when I first started this uh, four and a half, five months ago. But now, look, it's almost upon us. Any day now, people are going to be receiving their postal voting packages. And, of course, uh, voting will start. And the interesting thing about that is that I found out that statistically, uh, in the first week, 50%... 50% of returns actually go back to the Electoral Commission. That's an amazing statistic. Jack, um, last time that we spoke, uh, you were good enough to report to, uh, to us here uh, some of the happenings and some of the findings at the question time session over at the City of Stirling. And one of the things that came up at the last uh, actual uh, council meeting was the issue of the mayor's vehicle being involved in some sort of incident, accident or altercation, call it whatever you will. The interesting thing about that is that the question was asked on the basis was, you know, was it involved in some sort of incident? And the direct answer, quite categoric, I understand, that came back was the fact that no, the mayor's vehicle was not involved in an accident. Now, like if that was me or you or anybody else, we would have been on the front page of the West Australian or probably the community newspaper. But um, no more to be yeah. said. Well, Adam, obviously you're a witness to the to the fact, and this was a clear whitewash of, mm. of the uh, exact circumstances. Yeah. Um, directly attributed back to the CEO of, for the city. Yeah. Look, it's not about the incident. It's about the honesty. Yes. And, uh, you know, people have a right to know that there was some form of incident, and people have a right to know whether the gentleman that was struck is okay. And I'm pleased to report that um, he is getting better because I've actually checked on him. He is getting a lot better. He's still limping around a little bit. Uh, and he's still quite shocked about what happened at that incident. Sure. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure he is. Now, Jack, you attended the meeting last night. Um, actually, uh, it must have been a very short meeting. Obviously, everybody's in election mode. Uh, ordinarily, the meetings last an hour and a half, two meetings, uh, two, two hours. But last night, half an hour and it was over. Yeah. What's going on? Well, <laughs> Clearly, clearly, it was a very short agenda, um, and the uh, a couple of items on on the agenda were inappropriate to be on the agenda. And, and during questioning time, I did bring did raise the issue along with another ratepayer, uh, Mr. Arnold Davies, who's a regular who uh, in attendance. Um, one of the one of the matters pertained to. Uh, the overcross at uh, uh, over Reed Highway, the pedestrian overcross at Reed Highway, and whether or not in the evenings that overpass should be locked. It was a, a political um, uh, uh, contribution to uh, one of the um, member, one of the members of council who is currently being uh, 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 under um, uh, who's a candidate. Presently, so yep, got yeah. that. so uh, that was a that was a motion by David Boothman. Mm -hmm. um, when when asked whether or not that that whether or not this uh, was proper during the um, uh, during the caretaker period, um, the response from um, the um, uh, governance governance officer was that was a proper question. Mm. Um, I think the question is the appropriateness of whether or not it should have been done at this time. That's correct. Like yeah. you say, because it is in the course of the caretaker period. Yeah. And uh, given that that's the case, um, the timing could certainly be questioned. Yeah. I, I agree with you there, Jack. Same with the second uh, um, question and by notice, and that was by Samantha Jenkinson, who is retiring from council. And um, hopefully you will replace. <laughs> I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. Uh, her... Her uh, her motion was to replace the current uh, opening prayer with an affirmation. Um, again, not an appropriate thing during the caretaker period. The governance officer again ruled that it was. Yes. However, uh, when these two matters did come up for vote at the at the council, mm. uh, they were adjourned to to uh, a later time. Council recognized that that the 
information provided by the governance officer uh, was incorrect. Yeah. I think politics and religion uh, are always uh, an issue, and certainly they are an issue during the caretaker period as well, Jack. But the, the Lord's Prayer, which I understand is what they uh, recite prior to a council meeting, is what they do in Parliament, is what they do in the British Parliament, what yes. they do in the West Australian Parliament, what they do in the Federal Parliament. So it's not unusual to have the Lord's Prayer in, in that particular forum before the meeting starts. I think to change it to the affirmation, I think it does require some discussion. Uh, obviously, there are people's beliefs, because I think you'll find that with the Lord's Prayer, it tends to be, as I understand it, pretty uniform across all of Christianity. Is, is that correct? That's your understanding? Well, it's pretty, yeah. it's generally, it's yeah. generally uniform. I think when you start with affirmations and things that, you know, could possibly uh, steer away from what the intent of reciting the Lord's Prayer prior to uh, a particular meeting is all about. Yeah. Well, it's going to be something that I guess you and I will be addressing well, in the yes, future we'll as, as a result of that. Yes, yes. Uh, and, and possibly something like the national anthem could be played in, in, in place of that. Yeah, just, uh, got, just got to learn the words. I know the, the words to the first verse, but, um, and, and a bit of the second verse. And I was actually looking at uh, this uh, television or watching this television program the other day, and it was uh, Andre Rios, you know, the sure. ma maestro. Sure. The master yes. There? He, um, he was amazing, uh, you know, he was actually getting his orchestra to play the National Anthem, Anthem. and uh, everybody was singing along. It was actually in Melbourne, Australia, where this concert was held, and he played the first verse, everybody sang it very well, <laughs> played the second verse, uh, everybody sang it, you know, reasonably well. When it came to the third verse, <laughs> there was only about two or three people singing it. Um, <laughs> That's right. uh, look, you know, uh, I've seen I'm that guilty clip. of that too, I've got to say. Yeah. I've seen that clip as well. <laughs> Mm -hmm. um, Jack, what else is happening at the council meeting? Uh, any other questions well, yeah, that came up that are of interest? Yeah, very interesting uh, question um, session by uh, Mr. Paolino. Uh, he's the mayor's boy, isn't he? Oh, he's the mayor's boy, yeah. is right. That's right. And this was a mayor's question. Oh, that was gosh. a setup. I'm Clearly a setup question. Uh, both you and I have, have recognized uh, that the financial position for the city of Sterling um, provides that uh, from the report that there is a uh, 2.8 billion dollar um, net equity Let's in the company. Check. Three billion. Three billion dollars in, in net equity within the um, within the is, is the financial position of, yeah. of the of city of Sterling. That is the accumulated surplus mm -hmm. plus the reserves. Uh, reserves, which include investments and cash and reserves uh, for um, uh, assets. Mm -hmm. uh, and you and I have both stated that that is the financial position. Financial position. We're talking about surplus and reserve funds equating to around three billion dollars. That's correct. Okay, um, it's in your financial statements, City of Sterling. Have a good look at them and you'll know what we're talking about. If you don't know them, perhaps you could get someone to interpret them because that's our understanding. If that's not correct, well then you need to tell the people. And your accountants who certified this. Yeah. Fi don't financial lie and uh, you know, yeah. make out that it's not yeah. uh, when we know that it is based on the information that you're giving the public. Well, the, Paulino asked uh, about the cash reserves and the mayor deferred to the acting financial officer mm -hmm. and she reported that the cash reserves presently were about 72 million dollars mm. and frankly i kind of question whether or not it's that high at this particular time but nevertheless that was a report by the financial officer currently yes. um, then it was followed by uh, paulino making a, uh, a turning the council chambers into a political statement really against you and I who have who've made these statements about the three billion dollar mm -hmm. net equity mm -hmm. which is surplus and cash reserve and asked the mayor whether or not he was aware that there are certain candidates who have been uh, representing that there's a three billion dollar reserve in within the uh, Sterling uh, community. Well, Jacob, I'm just stop you there for a moment. I don't think that anybody's researched this as much as you and I have. So we're, we're very confident with the figures that we've put forward. 
Uh, as far as I'm concerned, that's the position that I interpret uh, from the financial statements that the City of Stirling has made available to the general public. So on that basis, uh, I have no qualm at all with the three billion that we're talking about. And and what's the result of the question? Well, then the follow the follow up question to that by Paulino was to the mayor: mm -hmm. What are you going to do about the candidates who are making these representations about the three billion dollars? The mayor deferred to the CEO. Oh, yeah. Uh, Interesting. Stuart Jar Jardine. And Stuart Jardine reported that the matter has been turned over to the WA Election Commission. Okay. Now, this entire segment of the meeting last night was wholly inappropriate. Paulino. And political. Paulino, pa Paulino transformed the council chambers into a political arena for himself. He mm. set himself up on the I wonder the stage. why the mayor didn't shut him down. He shuts you down every <laughs> second. He shuts everybody else down from time to time. Absolutely but, uh, was out of order. The mayor's boy doesn't get shut down. <laughs> no. That's very good, Mr. Mayor. Yeah. You're very consistent. We can see that. Yes. All right, look, um, we've got a lot more to talk about, A, about the elections, and B, about the city of Stirling. So stay tuned. We'll be back very shortly in the Local Government People's Programme.